Hey there, my friends. Welcome into another episode of Subscription Web Design. This podcast is all about helping you build a subscription web design business that you love, that supports your family, and gets you off of that client conveyor belt and moves you into what I like to call the client value escalator, where you're working with clients, hopefully over the lifetime of their business, to help them grow and move them further up the value that you can provide and the value that they can provide to their clients and customers. In this one, what I want to do is talk to you about the subscription web design side hustle. What you may not know is that for the first five years of my subscription web design business, technically four, four and a half, um, I was working part-time in my business. I was full-time employed at a law firm doing IT and technical work, and you know, I loved the people, and I don't want to say I hated the work. Um, I'm blessed and grateful for the work that I got to do. It was working in technology, and I'm a millennial, and I love tech, and all that's cool, but I definitely wasn't passionate about it, and I knew I wanted to grow something that would build up on the side to help me full-time support my family, but I didn't know how long it would take, and honestly, I didn't want to... Uh, set unreasonable goals. What we did, and me and my wife made this decision together, I set a five-year goal such that when my my boy Riker was getting ready to be in school, uh, we were going to homeschool him. That didn't end up working out. Um, But sure enough, by the time that he was old enough to start with school, we were able to quit that job and I was able to move full-time into my web design business. In fact, I made that decision and took that leap in January 2021. Um, I had been planning on it since around that previous fall, so the fall of 2020, smack dab in the middle of COVID. Whether or not that was a smart idea, um, looking back, I don't know. What I do know is that uh, God has been faithful, and to this point, our business has steadily grew, and I've been able to support my family and build a business that I love full-time since then. But maybe you're just at the beginning of this journey, and that's okay. It's really okay to look at where you are right now and make the best decision for your family when it comes to starting your business. And maybe you want to do a long-term side hustle. Maybe you want to do a side hustle that builds into full-time. What I want to talk through right now is some of the things that I had to think about and deal with when I was doing this as a side hustle. Before we jump in, this episode is brought to you by my course, Getting Started with Subscription Web Design. If you're someone who you think this is an intriguing concept, but you like the step-by-step roadmap, how to start making it work in your business, then I would encourage you to check out steveschramco slash SWD, steveschramco slash SWD. Use the code podcast and you'll get 20% off. And I think you're going to find that it's very helpful and get you started on the right foot. Now, how did I actually get started in subscription web design? Well, I'll tell you what happened. I had a mentor growing up who um, was great at business. And he, in his recording studio, had a really unique model for getting customers to come back every year for a recording. In the studio world, typically what happens is every year to two years, a band will need to record a new CD. And that wasn't always a guaranteed thing, but my mentor, Russell, understood that residual income, in other words, income that you can make the sale one time and it will always keep coming back to you, uh, was the name of the game. It was the best kind of business to build. So typically... CDs, at least in the sort of niche that he operates in, which is bluegrass and southern gospel music, CDs typically sell for about $15 a CD. And remember back in this time, you know, Spotify and all those things were still relatively new. Uh, CD sales were a lot higher then than they are now. Even so, you might be surprised to learn, and this is a different can of worms altogether, but you might be surprised to learn that people are still trying to get CD sales um, as a result because they make so much more money from CDs than from streaming. So selling CDs, at least in these circles, are still very, very common. So 
Russell knew that about $15 is what people expected to pay for a CD. So also to actually produce CDs for the customer after the expenses and all were taken care of for the actual project was not that much of an investment. So what he would do is this, and we'll just use simple math. Let's say $15 a CD, let's say a $1,500 recording session, and all you need to sell then to make $1,500 to pay for your recording session is 100 CDs at $15 each. And so he put that whole plan together and said, look, all you have to do is sell these 100 CDs that I'm going to give you as part of this project, and your next project is paid for. And he said, as long as you come back to the studio every single year, I'll never go up on the price. And that thinking stuck with me. And a couple years later, when this all went down and I, I started my web design business, I was too nervous to charge thousands of dollars for a website, even though I knew that's what they were going for. But I thought, I bet you I could get clients if I said, you know, how about you just pay me on a monthly basis and I'll build your website for you. Now, again, at the very beginning, I didn't know what all the little nuances and details would look like. And now that I have those figured out, I'm, I'm pleased to be able to have this podcast and my courses and all of that to help you get through this and not have to think through all of those things. But I had to make it up as I went along. And so I did. And I found that over time, steadily, month after month, year after year, it built up and grew. And you know that old proverb that says, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is today. That is exactly how many of the best decisions that I've made in my life were made. I decided to be an action taker and jump on it and actually do it instead of just thinking about what it would be like in 20 years or, or, or wishing or hoping. That is one of the biggest skills that you could possibly have in business. So... I decided to do it and I had my side hustle growing and that's how I got into subscription web design. So one of the big questions that I often get when you're thinking in terms of a side hustle is time management. How do you manage your time as a side hustler? How do you get it done? Well, my friends, I have to tell you, this is going to be quite an obvious answer because there is no magic here, but you'd be surprised to find out how much time most people, maybe not you, but you know, it's worth considering this. Most people are wasting many of the hours that they have laying around, scrolling social media and watching TV. Now, maybe you don't do that. Okay. Maybe you don't. Um, but a lot of people do. And I would seriously evaluate in your life whether you do. Now, here's what I'm saying and what I'm not saying. I'm not saying that you should fail to have a life while you're building your business. I am saying, I am saying that there will be seasons of life where you will have to ramp up the activity in order to get the results that you want. And that's just the bottom line. So right now, this is more about really getting real with what you want. If you decide that you really want this and you're really committed to it, you know, it takes waking up at 4 a.m. and working until it's time to get dressed to go to work and putting on your work clothes and then leaving. It takes coming home and deciding to spend a few hours with your family and then spending from 7 to 10 or from 10 to 1 or just whatever you can possibly muster to work on client development and actually building the websites and things of that nature. It takes that. It especially takes that if you plan to do this in a way that you are going to be the one doing most of the work and you want to grow this into a bigger business long term. Now, another way that you can do this, let's say that you would like to build a business like this that helps to pay you, but you're not so sure that you want to be doing all of the work. You can actually start the scaling game very early. Build some relationships with folks on Upwork who, man, so many of them do fantastic work and it takes a little bit to find the right person. But you can use strategies like that to start partnering with people and you doing client development and and you know relationship building and, and blogging and, and video creation and those things and letting somebody with a more technical mindset 
actually end up doing the work and uh, fulfilling on the deliverables for the client. So I think that is a, um, you know, it, it's not anything profound, but it is something that you're going to have to deal with is decide, you know, am I going to do this as a long term side hustle? If you're going to do it as a long term side hustle, I would seriously consider bringing in some help so that you can do it in a way where it doesn't take up all of your mornings and evenings forever. Start scaling while you have a full time job. What a blessing that is that you have income coming in that you don't need this additional income to support your family. You can use that. You can use the money you make from the business to help scale your team early. And then you may find in a few years, if you wanted to make the leap to full-time, you could quit your job and already have a full-time business that's working for you, even though you've only been working on it part-time. So there's lots of different ways that you can go about this. I'm already over my time for this episode, so I need to break it off. But it's important that you understand However you'd like to design the business for you, there's a way to get it done. I went through a lot of those different options throughout my course. So again, if you go to stevestram.co slash SWD, use the code podcast for 20% off. I think you're going to find that it's a helpful way to actually get you into the game and help make some of these decisions for you that are so important. Hope this episode has helped you and blessed you. Can't wait to see you next week.